welcome back to Edomar's Tutorials. This week we're making this. And someone asked me recently in my Q&A um, how I get my inspiration. Well, this was inspired by one of you. Since my last rainbow hair tutorial, someone um, commented saying my hair looked like unicorn poop, which inspired me to make this. <laughs> like I said, inspiration comes from the weirdest things. So if you want to see how I make this, then keep on watching. First of all, you will need wire of different gauges and a wire cutter. You will also need polymer clay, tools for making uh, jewelry, these uh, round things to mold your uh, horn onto. For further decoration, you can also use flowers. You can use you can use glitter, and you can use little rhinestones. You can also use chains like this or other like nice dangly things or uh, beads that you might have. I also have some small glass beads here at the bottom of this jar. Also what might be handy for um, suspending your horn while you're baking it in the oven is something like this. Now this is a kitchen towel hanger but maybe you can think of another way to do this because I fear that if I hold it upright um, just put it like with the bottom size down, it will uh, sag in the in the oven. So I'm gonna hang it upside down. You may also need some craft glue. Okay, I may have forgotten something, but <laughs> if I do, I will mention it in the process. And um, yeah, let's get started. I thought I might start off with uh, the wire um, frame. I actually have two kinds here, uh, a smooth kind of uh, aluminum wire and this Sort of interesting, well it's basically just filed a little uh, roundy bit into it. So I think I'm going to use this because, you know, unicorns and all that. And what you want to do is measure out two lengths that can go around your head and then a little bit extra. And do that again. And this you want to bend obviously, go around your head. What you want to do with the first uh, one, um, before you adjust it to your length, you may want to um, bend it the way we want to bend it. And that is, at the center front, we want to bend it down, like so. Try and even both sides up a bit. And you also want to check, um, I have these things to make the horn onto, uh, whether it sort of fits in between there. So that's probably better to do this first and then um, determine here at the end how long you want it to be and fold the ends back on itself. Okay, now turn your attention to the other wire you have. And we're going to intertwine this one. What I'm going to do is lay this sort of like so. I'm going to find the middle again. About the middle, and then take this one, this one on top, and then I'm gonna twist this around once and have it come down with a curve like so, and do the same thing on the other side. I'm gonna go under and over and then have it come down in a curve and I'm trying to even that up on both sides. And check it with your uh, round thing, see if it sort of like matches up. If it doesn't, pull this top one and this bottom one down. On the ends you could just wrap around the other wire a couple of times and then cut it off. And that's the framework done. Let's move on to the horn. Now I have um, two ways to make a horn to show you. This is just uh, some more female play, but I had already tried it 
needed it before and didn't use it, so I put it in a plastic baggie to keep it good. What you're going to do is soften your acrylic clay. Make sure you have um, clean hands when you do this, because especially the white clay does tend to show mm. dirt particles a bit. When it's nice and soft, put it on your tile or your work surface and start rolling it. Do keep it kind of fat at first though. And I'm making my horn no longer than the size of this um, tile. Also, uh, I'm using one packet of clay per horn. And this first technique is a flat horn. And what you want to do is um, roll this out on one side. So you shape a basic sort of tapered carrot shape. And now what you want to do is take a rolling pin or stick, like I have here, and flat on one side. So make it even longer, so make sure that you account for that. And then grab the tip and the bottom and start twisting it. While holding the tip, you can hold the bottom. Twist it like so. See how you end up with a nice looking unicorn horn? To jazz this up a bit, I'm gonna use a little bit of sparkles. I'm just gonna use a makeup brush. Alright, what we now want to do is um, check the end and see what way it slopes. So when you put it on your head, you sort of wanted to point upwards a little bit. So uh, I'm just gonna camfer it a little bit. So cut off a little bit of the end there. And also uh, make sure it fits on our little doohickey. And to further attach it, or if you just wanna attach it to a ribbon, uh, I suggest you make a hole here at the bottom so you can easily attach it. So take a pointy thing and a hole through it. And this thing has a couple of holes uh, here on the side so I'm gonna make sure that the holes are on the side uh, and the horn parent points upwards. So what I'm gonna do now is uh, put a, um, a wire through these holes and um, Suspend it from that thing I showed you earlier. Try not to make the polymer clay touch the metal, that, that way it will uh, stay the straightest and the nicest while baking. So, yeah, that's ready to pop in the oven, but I wanted to show you one more method of making a horn. I have this um, clay here that has built in glitter. This time I'm going to use only half of that and add a touch of pink to this one. Not too much, just a tiny wee bit, because it will be quite strong and I just want a really soft pink. So, I'm doing a dotting. Put little dots of the pink into your white clay and then start working it in and mixing it through until it's completely mixed. Or you can leave it marbled if you want, but I think I want it completely mixed. I usually find it faster to just twist and fold over a bunch of times to mix human clay together. Um, if you're lucky enough to have one of those pasta um, makers, this goes a lot faster. You don't have to do this manually. But since I don't have one of those, it's just mix, mix, mix. <laughs> Both your pieces of clay are nice and soft. It's uh, basically the same as before. Make a little sausage. And then start tapering one end like a carrot. Then, once you're happy, place the next one another. And grab the ends together and start twisting these. And roll them a little bit so they're a little bit more one shape. And this is the kind of horn you end up with. So 
I'm gonna be popping these in the oven for 30 minutes on 130 degrees or that Celsius or 265 Fahrenheit and um, then I'll get back to you and continue this tutorial. Okay, halfway through the baking time they both fell off the metal things. So I guess this is back to the drawing board and this has happened. It burned, see stuff goes wrong for me sometimes too. So now I'm happy I put one of these holes in there because what I'm going to do now is um, thread a bit of wire through that and attach it like that and see if I can save this pink one because that one doesn't look so burned. So I'm just going to thread this through here. Hang it like so. I think I'll just have to glue it on these things later on. They should still fit if I find the right angle. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, sometimes stuff just doesn't go according to plan. <laughs> oh well. Thought I better show you so you can learn from my mistakes. I still think it's a good idea to hang it because that way. Um, you do get the advantage of gravity keeping it straight but maybe not, not directly onto the metal thing and just glue it onto the metal thing later on. So yeah, of the two I think the pink one is salvageable. Um, this one I'm probably gonna do again. So let's continue on with this one then. So yeah, I think if I had to do this again I would poke a hole through it and use slightly thicker wire because the thin one sort of pulled down a little bit in the clay as well. Then, once we've done that, we're going to grab our crown and use these threads to attach this piece to the crown. And that is now attached. Now I have these uh, flowers here, so I thought I might, you know, decorate it a bit and uh, jazz it up with some ribbons and chains and stuff. You can use these um, jewelry making sticks to attach the this type of um, chain to it. What I'm doing is just pushing the chain into that little loop at the end there. I might have to bend it open a slight tad a little bit. And then push it back closed with your pliers, your nose pliers. Now I'm gonna add a little jewel at the end there. And I bought some stuff for that, so I'm gonna turn this upside down. And I have one of these smaller ones of these uh, sticks with a like a thingy at the end, and that will go through like that. So you have a little pearl like that. And I'm gonna attach that here at the bottom to that loop we left. These are extremely small holes, so I might use some wire to attach these. This wire actually goes through here. Yep, it does. So I'm just going to cut a small length of that. Couple. Give it a couple of twists, like so. You have it attached, and then attach it to the... Just wrapping the thread on itself again. Should be fairly secure. Mm. 
<clears throat> now that I have attached all the gems, I'm gonna build up a couple of these flowers. Just layer three on top of one another, and then I'm gonna take a little bead, put that in the center. Like that. And I'm gonna attach that here in the crown. Also gonna attach some of these flowers. Make sure to thread a ribbon through the end so you can tie it at the back. And if you want to, you can use some rhinestones around here. Um, but I think it is elaborate enough as it is. So I'm just going to show you how it looks on. And guys, this is the end result. I hope you like it. Um, yeah, if this turned out right, I think it would look very, very nice as well. I might actually go and do this again, but uh, at the moment I don't have any time. I just want to say thank you very much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this and um, you learned something new. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Uh, subscribe to my channel, also check out my Facebook and Instagram page and I hope to see you all next week. Bye everyone!